With this simple victory Chelsea ambled a little closer to Manchester City at the top of the table and ridiculed the weakness of Stoke City's squad. At no point did this match seem an authentic contest. Mark Hewis' improvised side appearing like ragtag underlings even before Antonio R. Diger opened the scoring in the third minute. Danny Drinkwater, Pedro, William and Davides Apicosta amused themselves by adding their names to score sheet after that. Chelsea omitted key players such as Eden Hazard and Cesc F. Brigas in advance of Wednesday's showdown with Arsenal but that was an unnecessary precaution since the hosts did not have to exert themselves to trounce these woeful visitors. Hughes was deprived of his first-choice defenders and also chose to leave out other regular starters thus increasing the pressure on him for Monday's low-brow encounter with Newcastle but the shabbiness of the side sent out against the champions spoke badly about the state of Stoke. It also alluded to the widening gap between the Premier League's mega-rich and the merely very rich. But, that fact notwithstanding, Stoke should be better than they are. Mohamed Salah double inspires Liverpool fight back after Vardy opener read more. Even when at full strength Stoke have the most porous defence in the Premier League so they were never likely to avoid the spanking here with a hodgepodge lineup. Tom Edwards and Josh Tymon, 18-year-old fullbacks, might have thought that they would benefit from sound help from senior teammates during their early days in the Premier League but instead they were surrounded by experienced players who made no impact. Charlie Adam and Ibrahim Afele had not started in the league all season and proved unable to keep up with proceedings while it mattered. And the same could be said of Sato Barahino, making his first start since September, and a few others, including Darren Fletcher and Kevin Wimmer. Stokes' second string looks third-rate. Two years ago Adam scored a famous goal at Stamford Bridge from inside his own half and it rapidly became clear that he would probably have to do the same again if the visitors were to have any chance of finding the net this time because it certainly did not look like they were going to be able to piece together a move that would carry them that far forward. Jeff Cameron skanked the ball out of play to concede a corner after 17 seconds, establishing the tone for what followed. Stoke fell behind two minutes later. R. Diger jumping between three static opponents to note a free kick by Willian into the net from six yards. In the ninth minute Drinkwater treated himself to his first goal since his transfer from Leicester City. And what a beauty it was. After a deft piece of control with his thigh, the midfielder swept the ball into the top corner of the net from 25 yards. Jack Butland did not even make a token effort to save it. But the goalkeeper soon got busy to thwart Alvaro Morata after the striker was sent clear by Willian. Facebook Twitter Pinterest Jack Butlin dives but cannot keep Pedro's shot out for Chelsea's third goal. Photograph. Toby Melville, Reuters. Mostly Stoke looked servile and it seemed only a matter of time before Chelsea would help themselves to more goals. The third came in the 23rd minute following nifty interplay between Pedro and Willian. The Spaniard crowned the piece by jinking past Edwards and placing a shot into the bottom corner from the edge of the box. With all semblance of a contest put to bed, Chelsea effectively donned their dressing gown and slippers midway through the first period. Lowering the intensity allowed Stoke to drift into the game and the visitors even went so far as to put the ball in the net before the break but the referee spotted a handball by May Mbarame Duf before the Senegalese striker shot past Thibaut Courtois. Swansea beat Watford with two late goals from IU and Narsing Reed Moore. The only source of frustration for Chelsea, meanwhile, was more out of strange lack of sharpness before he was replaced in the 71st minute. It was as if the striker was contaminated by the ineptitude of a defence that never looked able to contain him. Butland's resistance was honorable, in fairness, and the goalkeeper deserved praise for getting the better of the Chelsea striker in another one-on-one -on -one duel midway through the second half. 
the irrepressible William brought another decent stop from Butlin two minutes later with a shot from 20 yards. Fast forward another minute and William presented Pedro with an opportunity to beat the Stoke goalkeeper from close range but Pedro side-footed over the bar. William deserved to get among the goalscorers and was invited to do so when Cameron clunked into him to concede a penalty. The Brazilian sent Butland the wrong way from the spot. Zappa Costa joined in the fun late on, cracking a low shot into the net from 20 yards.